Welcome to the program. I'm Tracy Bowden sitting in for Kerry O'Brien. The Catholic Church in Australia faces fresh criticism tonight over its handling of child sex abuse cases, this time from Ireland, the country seen as possibly the worst case in the church's worldwide scandal. The 7.30 report can reveal that at least two Australian priests, suspended and under investigation of abuse in Australia, continued their ministry in Ireland to the dismay of Irish victims groups. In one instance, a Sydney bishop gave approval for the suspended priest Finian Egan to minister in Ireland, but failed to warn any church officials there. Finian Egan was subsequently found by the church to have abused two girls. And after the 7.30 report aired complaints about the church's handling of that investigation, more women have come forward with allegations against the same priest. Tim Palmer reports. Tall and athletic, twins Peter and Paula Sneesby were so close in looks as teenagers that even their siblings often mistook one for the other. But as friends and confidants, they were even harder to separate, keeping nothing from each other. Nothing they say except one appalling secret. We've always shared everything together and I, I really can't tell you, for some reason we just couldn't share the fact that we had been sexually assaulted um, by Father Egan. So all that time we kept it our secret, our dark, dark secret. The secret, they say, was that each girl was abused by their local priest, Father Finian Egan. The sisters would be in their 50s before they finally pulled back the veil. I just said to Peter, Pete, something happened to me when I was, I was a little girl and I said it had to do with Father Egan and I started to cry and then Peter said, oh no, she said it happened to me and he told me that he'd leave you alone. The shame still, it, it's still here in my gut, in my stomach, it's in my heart. My heart's just broken <laughs> and it's knowing that, knowing that my sister, I that I couldn't save my sister. By then, the women believed the priest was dead. That only changed two months ago, when the 7.30 report aired a story on two other women, found by a church investigation to have been abused by Father Egan when they were children. I found out from the 7.30 report that that there have been other ladies and girls and that's what really hit us. It was just devastation just to see that someone I had thought was dead, that I hoped was dead, was there. And that started to make me really think, um, what do I do? Do I continue to hide in the shadows and um, forget about it or do I stand up like those ladies did? and, and make, a, make a stand for children and to say, no, this cannot go on any further. As children, Peter and Paula Sneesby lived next door to Our Lady of the Rosary Church in the New South Wales holiday town, The Entrance. They went to Mass and were coached in basketball by the local priest, Father Finian Egan. I was 14 and a half and it went on... I, I would... I can recall for at least two years and it was it was constant it wasn't just one day after mass if he was driving me to basketball it would happen it would happen at basketball training once everyone else had left it would happen after church it would happen because he would say he'd come to our house. He came to our home. He, he um, introduced himself to our mum and um, over, the, over the time he just became such an integral part of our family. Mainly most Friday nights he would be over at our home uh, playing cards with all my aunts and uncles and that's when he would take me aside and sexually assault me by touching my breast, kissing me, um, sticking his um, 
finger in, in my private parts um, and, and he'd do it by, by putting a rug around me and sitting me on the lounge and then he would start. He started to touch me and he would put his hands down my little blue shorts and he would put his hands up my top and touch my breasts and um, this went on while adults were playing cards. He took me over to the nun's house and uh, he um, sexually assaulted me by putting his penis inside me and um, and again kissing and I was screaming. I was screaming because it was hurting and I just remembered look, looking up, looking up above me and I, I saw the crucifix and, and Jesus Christ is on the crucifix and I just I just thought, is this my life? Have I done something terrible in my life? Peter alleges that even after she tried to throw herself out of his car, Egan continued the abuse. He said, you shouldn't be doing this. And he said, oh, no, it's because I love you. I love you, Peter. I love you. I'll always love you. The twins say, along with those endearments, came threats. He told me that if I ever told anyone that my mum would die and that I would burn in hell. As women with their own happy families, their mother now dead, such threats have lost their power. Along the way, Peter Sneesby says she insisted Father Egan witness her progression to a normal life by performing her wedding mass. People will think this is quite bizarre of me and probably think it's the wrong thing that I did. But I got in contact with him and I made him come and marry my husband and I. And he didn't want to. And I said, you will do it because I want you to see that you haven't destroyed me totally. Last month, the twins' case went to the police. They've been joined in that by the two other women whose accounts of abuse by Finney and Egan were shown on the 7.30 report in May. That story detailed how Father Egan has continued performing services and other associations with the church despite an investigation which upheld sex abuse complaints against him. Through his lawyer, Father Finney and Egan has denied all of the twins' allegations and likewise denied all of the allegations that were upheld in the church's previous investigation. In that previous story, the 7.30 report asked serious questions about the church's response to the complaints against Father Egan. Last August, for example, just weeks after Broken Bay Bishop David Walker apologised to two women for what they'd suffered at the hands of Finian Egan, Father Egan was back in his priest's robe.